Dr. Larry Tarikoka becomes fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, the first and the only Nigeria amongst the 30 fellows globally. He was hosted to construct key conversation event in Lagos in association with Inside Business Africa. We have a report. Still on Tauri Koka, the Quantity Surveyor Agile Alufuhai, past president of the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors, speaks on the man and his pencil. The Environment, Jawura Environmental Services CEO, speaks on the state of the nation's environment and the position of his firm and the offerings. We're talking about Professor Ladele Oshibanjo. There is a new governor in Ondo State. His name is Sir Rotimi Akiridulu. His Excellency, he preferred to be called Arakunin, a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association. What are the expectations of the people? We speak with our Tumba Dele Ologun Chairman, Robana Global Limited, on the way forward. Plus, engineer Alade Olumuiwa Jibola is 70 and CED magazine is rolling out the drum to host him in Lagos. Find out what the event format is all about and the date on Inside Business Africa. This is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Hello and thanks for joining us. My name is Kenneth Odushola Stevenson and this is Inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. We are all quite glad and happy that the president has returned back to the country to govern Nigeria. He returned on Friday and every Nigeria is quite uh, happy about this development. Meanwhile, he will be taking a big rest and, and act, acting president, Professor Sibajo, will still be holding forth and is doing very, very well. And on Inside Business Africa, when we come back, right after this commercial break, we will be talking about the nation's environment and more other interesting issues on business, finance and the economy as we speak with the, the managing director of Jawura Environmental Services. Stay with Inside Business. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader, Dr. Larry Tauri Koka, was recently elected into the prestigious position of the Fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects. He's the only Nigerian and among the 30th globally, an institution that is over 100 years old, having only 30 fellows. That's quite an achievement, is it? Isn't it? Inside Business Africa, in association with CD Magazine, hosted him to a very important event with the platform called Construct Key Conversation, where he talked about the architectural sector in line with the economic development and Nigeria's recession period. Also, some key personalities, including the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architect, architect Tony Braid, was also in attendance. Here's our report. The importance of architecture in this present economy in which Nigeria seek her rightful position in the already emerged 21st century global economy cannot be overemphasized since the quality of human habitat and environment revolves around architecture. Therefore, architecture education in the country has to raise its standard to foster students' creativity and strengthen their interest, motivation and commitment to improve the environment since Nigeria continuously needs to compete in knowledge, development and innovation economy. It is against the backdrop of the importance of architecture in stimulating economic development that constructs Key's Conversation, a CED magazine's platform, held the first edition in the series in 2017 in honor of Dr. Lamre Tauri Koka, Friba, FNRA, PhD, who was recently elected Fellow of the prestigious Royal Institute of British Architects, Riba, the first and only Nigerian to be so elected into the 30 Global Fellow of Riba. It is also of note that Dr. Larry Tauri Koka was one time Commissioner of Housing Lagos State and has written two books on housing development in Nigeria. 
The event, held at four points by Sheraton, Victoria and Lagos, attracted dignitaries from the built environment and the business community, including Basharun J.K. Rangdu, architect Tony Oliver Braid, president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, representative of engineer Ami Maseli, CEO M Group of Companies, among others. The program started with a short welcome speech by Mr. Kenneth Odushola Stevenson, the Chief Executive Officer, Century 21 Systems Communications Limited, the organizers of the events. And the quality of the people you know, we also reflect in your bank account. So if you, if you move around the right people and, and do what is right, you won't be recognized. And I think that is a major, a major achievement. And to that extent, we would like to congratulate you uh, once again. And also, we have decided to put a publication in the And that publication is available here now. And uh, so that whatever we do, you are able to listen to here, you can also go with a transcript of that in the publication. Thereafter, the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, architect Tony Breed, spoke on the honor Dr. Larry Tarikoka has brought to the country, being the first Nigerian to be elected fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects, welcoming all the distinguished guests to the event and appreciating Dr. Larry Tarikoka for accepting to greet the occasion and congratulating him on his new election as the fellow of the Royal Institute of British Architects. Conversation anchored by Oni Nwangu Stevenson took the live television format since the event was broadcast live on Facebook. Had Dr. Larry Tarikoka to leak discourse and spoke on the theme architectural design and methodology as catalyst for economic development. He started the conversation on his background and his journey into becoming who he is today.
Dr. Coker stated that one of the things that made him to be consistent was the zeal to succeed no matter what. Stating the difference between Nigerian architects and the British architects, Dr. Coker said Nigerian architects lack opportunity, exposure and continuity. Why the British architects have all this? South Africa, every Commonwealth country, I believe, was the, the local institutes were initiated by the RIA, and we led the campaign to expel South Africa from the Commonwealth Association of Architects. During the time of apartheid, there was not one single African architect in South Africa, as our land was. And incidentally, the first African architect, I've met. Speaking further, Dr. Lanry Tauri Koka stated that it's the responsibility of the state and local governments, not the federal government, to develop houses that will be affordable for low income earners nationally. He also emphasized the need to have more building projects in order to provide more employment and more economic activities in the country. So now, once that state sent its, its requirements to the federal level in Pretoria, the federal level in Pretoria would allocate the exact amount of money for the number of units that it said needed. The conversation was also open to the distinguished guests at the event, all emphasizing on the importance of Nigerian government to take architecture professional environmental standards. That's when you, they riddled it down to the next bottom. And the final thing was the design. It was at the point that we did the design that they flew from Washington to tell us that we had won the competition. Still on Dr. Larry Tauri Koka, a freeba and a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architect and also a PhD holder. And he also used that opportunity of that event to sign some of the a book, session, book signing session for some of the participants at that event. Meanwhile, we were able to cut up with a very important friend of his, Quantity Surveyor Alufuhai, who spoke very glowingly about the personality of Dr. Larry Tauri Koka and his pencil. I congratulate him immensely. I rejoice with him, with him exceedingly well. I pray that uh, he will continue to be the shining light to you know, architecture in, in the world. Uh, I pray that um, he will continue to inspire the younger generation. He has really inspired uh, a lot of us, not only in architecture uh, and outside the architecture. I have been, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, privilege to be part of that uh, uh, source of inspiration. So I wish him well and uh, you know, I congratulate him exceedingly well. Yeah, before we call it a day on that particular Diary Coca's event, let me also use this opportunity to congratulate him and allow him to continue to do what is right for the built environment, continue to design the best of buildings in Nigeria and globally. He's doing very well. Congratulations indeed. And moving on now, when we come back, we'll talk about the nation's environment and what Jawura Environmental Services has been doing and what they're offering for the nation. Welcome back. You're still inside Business Africa, Africa's business news and information leader. Thanks for staying with us. Jawura Environmental Services Limited CEO, Professor Oladele Osimbanjo has been speaking with Inside Business Africa in this report about the nation, the state of Nigeria's environment and vis-a-vis -vis what Nigeria's Ministry of Environment should be doing, and if, especially in Lagos State, where the issue of environment is quite key. We spoke with him on this special report on the environment. The truth that we have only one planet Earth and that our environment is deeply interconnected is daily being played out in the web of crises confronting the world today. 
They may appear not to be closely linked, but a close look shows that there are strands revealing that they are held together by clear logic. This logic pertains to a reinforced field of perception in which transactional actions have shut out the doors of transformational actions. This report hopefully will help us to task or ask questions, interpret events robustly and take action to prize open the shut doors of justice as we relate to our environment and the nature's resources. Nature's resources belong to nature. When human times them natural resources, the implication is that these resources occur naturally and can thus be grabbed or taken by the quickest, the strongest and the most brazen. Resolving or at least tackling the endemic environmental problems of the world requires that we critically review the root causes of some of these problems as well as the political filters through which we view them. Anything short of this means that we simply scale the problems or at best tackle the symptoms while the problem fester and eventually develop into catastrophic proportions. Some policymakers consider the number one task of safeguarding the environment to be the demolition of so-called illegal structures and informal settlements, even though we know our cities cannot survive without them. Professor Oladile Osimbanjo, Chief Executive Officer, Jawura Environmental Services Limited, speaks on the challenges and solutions for the environment and for safer environment, including his firm's offering in this regard. Having said that, Jawura arose out of the, my activities globally and nationally. I have been an expert on marine pollution for United Nations Environment Program since 1981. I was one of the seven consultants that established the East African Regional Seas Marine Program for UNEF. And I've also been involved with UNEF on the issue of persistent organic pollutants. It was launched in 1983. So, and with my activity at the international level and local level, I observe we have uh, some gaps. There's knowledge gap in the country. There is scarcity of competent uh, personnel so there's a manpower gap, and then awareness among the public about environmental issues was very weak. So and as a teacher in the classroom, who has also matched my international experience with research, yes. through the special grace of God, I have produced 27 PhDs at mm -hmm. University of Ibadan in area of analytical and environmental chemistry. I have worked on oil pollution, I've worked on industrial pollution, I've worked on air pollution, I've worked on so many aspects, chemicals, you name it, contaminated sites and all that. So I now saw that, again, we need to, we run abroad or bring in experts when we have these issues. Yeah. And I trained my first degree in Ibadan, my master's and PhD in University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom, where I received, I mean, I won the Elwell Award of the Royal Society of Chemistry, Midlands Region, in 1976 for my contribution to the development of analytical chemistry. So I saw a challenge for me to make a difference. Now we had cocoa toxic waste. I analyzed the waste for the federal government then, it was during the time of President Babangida, and the director of EPPD then was a gentleman, unusual Nigeria, late Dr. Eban Sainal, yes. for his product even at the end of, of his useful life, including the packaging. So if you start collecting waste, there are ready buyers, but we only need to organize it in a more efficient way. So what I'm saying, what we are looking for in Sokoto is in Sokoto already. Yes, right. We don't need to go far. There's waste, refuse everywhere. If you can encourage the use to be turn what we call waste to wealth.
Our special report on the environment will continue on the inside business next time and we will continue to talk about this particular sector as it's very key to a very healthy nation. And when we come back right after this commercial break, we'll be talking about the new henchman in Ondo State. Arakuri wrote him, he took off the he took off on a very good note, so to speak, despite all the challenges. But some personalities and stakeholders in Ondo State have been speaking. We we'll talk about all that when we come back right after this commercial break. How will you like your construction and engineering industry news and information? Blood, complex and difficult to read. Or sharp, ready to read and explore. Presenting Construction and Engineering Digest magazine CED refreshing clarity in construction and engineering industry news and information. Construction and Engineering Digest magazine CED incorporating oil and gas report with news and information that work for you. His Excellency Rotimi Akiridulu took the over out of office on the 24th of February 2017 and he has a four years mandate but he came in at a period when Nigeria is in recession especially when the state is owing over eight months salary. And indeed, this is a very big task to overcome. Some of the key stakeholders in Ondo State have been speaking on the way forward and what the governor can do to actually take a very important look and perform well and give good governance to the Ondo State people. Here is Sir uh, Otumba Ologun who has been speaking with Inside Business on these issues and more. The newly sworn in governor of Ondo State, Oluwaro Chimi Akiridolu SAN, has promised to make the collective interest of the state its paramount focus. Akiridolu said this few days in Akure in his address shortly after taking out of office and mixed pond and pageantry. Akiridolu also pledged not to renege on his campaign pledge that the people's welfare shall form the basis of his government. In his word, we listen to our people in the course of our campaign to all nooks and crannies of the state. We heard them loud and clear through their votes. We witnessed firsthand the deplorable condition under which they exist and we are determined to make the difference with the specific mandates of redemption liberally handed over to us. Our platform for change is erected on the strong pillars which consist of the core sectors of the government activities that our blueprint plays emphasis on, he said. The governor listed the core sectors that will receive the government's attention to include finance and management of state resources, agriculture and natural resources, commerce and industrial development, education and technology, land, housing and the environment, amongst others. Otumba Dili Ologun Chairman Robin Global Limited, while congratulating the governor, spoke on the, ple on the people's expectation and the path the governor could tread. Two great minds, two great people, wonderful people. They know what they are doing. They are capable, you know. You can't, uh, you can't take that away from uh, someone that was a former NBA president, uh, Nigeria Bar Association president in the old federation. You can't take that away from, um, I'm talking about capacity and capability from uh, someone of that caliber that have been there before. So there are two great minds. Uh, the deputy, Honorable Agbolaja, a member of the Federal House of Representatives, you can't take the capacity and the capability away from them. They are up to the task. Good governance, okay. transparency, you know, and uh, uh, you expect uh, good governance from them because the man Arakunre Luaru Dolo is someone you can trust with your money. You can trust his words. You can trust his promises. If he tell you this is what he's going to do, uh, you can trust him. And that's where that's where good that's where good governance starts. Good governance starts, starts from trust. When you trust your leader, when you trust his words, then everything is good to go. As we must say, very big congratulations to the new governor of Undo State, His Excellency Rotimi Akiridulu. We are hoping that you'll be able to deliver good governance in a very short time because that state has gone through a lot 
you had the Otumba talking about that particular expectations in the state. Moving on now, before we call it a day on today's edition of the program, I want to let you into a very important event that is holding on Thursday in Lagos. It's a, a birthday celebration for one of the pride of the engineering sector in Nigeria, engineer Alade Ajibola, who is 70. Indeed, the celebration was actually done on Sunday last week. However, uh, we have decided to put together a very important platform, Construct Skill Conversation session to celebrate this man let's hear what he says about being 70. well 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 i must tell you i have nothing i feel nothing what what god has done in my life i just feel so thankful to god for attaining this age looking back and seeing the the pressures, the the traumas that one has gone through, and arriving at this shore, one cannot but be thankful to God. Mm. I have travelled over the water in speedboat, in canoe, in in uh, barges, in in ship. It, you know, just to reach a site. Mm. Not to talk about, you know, facing challenges of uh, projects, running projects, and uh, needing to uh, source for funds where there are no funds, mm. and uh, just being bold, and then God answers your prayers somehow. And it's, it's not the easiest thing to work in the Nigerian environment. But I want to thank God. Uh, I want to also thank my, my family. Because when you start a company, it's not, I don't know about these days. <laughs> maybe government helps you, maybe you have some family members that help you. But in those days, we were very much on our own, and things were tough. Well, I'm afraid that's about all we have time for on Inside Business Africa for today. Join us on Thursday at the Sheraton Hotels and Towers in the morning, 9 a.m., that's 16th of March, 2017, for Konstrukski Conversation, where engineer Ajibola will be unveiling his platforms and also his position in the, in the engineering sector and how that can unlock the potentials of engineering for economic development. It's been Kenneth Odishola Stevenson presenting Inside Business Africa. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.